I'll, I will use your uh, screen share. Uh, okay, good. Okay, right. All right. Yeah. Well, me... um, there's some, it's something wrong <laughs> with my issues. Okay. Um, let me let me go back. Let's see. Let me try. Yeah, there's something wrong. Oh, Nancy, actually, you, you already have that on, right? You have that downloaded already. Or never mind. Let me download it real quick. Um, oh, oh, it says that someone is editing this visual. I see. Um, Nancy, you there? Oh, right. Thank you. All right, so Nancy, you can just uh, flip stage. Um, yeah, just flip, next one. Yeah, so who are we? We're um, Vectors Angel. This is an Angel community, just focus exclusively on impact in, uh, investment. Uh, we only cover two areas, sustainability and healthcare, uh, because of our other area we have expertise in. Uh, Myself, uh, I'm a I'm a venture background, uh, and I my own specialty is in renewable energy, tech to market, early stage, um, uh, startup incubation, go to market acceleration, uh, and uh, also I work in uh, corporate venture capital on renewable energy. Uh, I founded uh, Vectors Angel because I I believe it's very important for early stage companies to access to resources uh, like uh, those very um, uh, rich resource uh, angel investors who not only have finance but also have the uh, connections, health, and mentorship that can help the early stage companies to really enable the impact. Uh, so next slide. Um, yeah, so the investment thesis for us is uh, we look for venture back uh, positive impact companies uh, that can also provide a sound financial return to investors. So for all the uh, investment memo, we'll, I will let you know what is the positive impact we see in this company and what is the potential financial return um, if you're investing in uh, at that uh, particular stage. Um, next slide. Uh, and upon uh, investing in those companies, uh, we ask all the companies to sign an impact pledge. Uh, which is the way uh, that we want the companies to continue working on what they they want to do uh, with a benefit, uh, with a positive impact in the society. Uh, what is, a, for example, if they're working on the climate change space, then what is the you know, CO2 they want to remove from the atmosphere by continue working on uh, towards their journey. Uh, we believe it's very important for our companies to uh, to really um, believe what they what they do, we we really invest in the founders uh, who are embarking on the journey because they 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 very they are really strongly uh, believing on the market and the solutions they have. Next one. Next slide. Yeah. So um, again, I, I just quickly mentioned why under investors because. Uh, that's what early com early stage companies needed the most, um, and then we want to help the companies to be better prepared for uh, to go to market, uh, to scale, uh, and also prepare for the next stage of financing if possible. So our sweet spot is this stage, but we are working with you know later stage companies as well, as long as we we believe we can be adding value to the companies, and we we like to uh, work with the company as well. Next. Yeah, so the, the current process of Vectors Angel is uh, we, we have the companies uh, come to our pitch day, uh, they submit their deck, uh, we do a review, uh, and our own internal deal team will do a complete uh, technical and business due diligence uh, with a, a great upon investment term with a, with a startup. Uh, if the company uh, pass our DD process, uh, which means our own internal team members are willing to invest in the company, we'll call for an official syndicate. Um, but however, if we don't invest in the company for X, Y, Z reason, uh, we still pass the information to the annual community. Uh, we want to create our, more opportunities for both the investors and the uh, startup founders to uh, fund each other. Um, 
yeah, so that's that's our current process. Uh, where to submit the deck? Uh, so the startup, please go to the entrepreneur's page on our website. Uh, down here, please, next slide. Um, same, same for the investors. If you want to join our mailing list, uh, join our Slack channel, also go to our website, uh, fill in your information, uh, and they will be able to see the Slack uh, invitation uh, link uh, after you fill out the form. So we, we, we know better uh, what is your expertise and interest. Next one. Um, so how to join our team? Uh, the, the easiest way is to join uh, through the investment fellow program uh, and the participant uh, will run complete due diligence with us. Uh, we, we will teach you how to run due diligence um, through the complete the VC training. So actually, you know, people going through our uh, investment fellowship program, some of them are staying with Vectors Angel, um, to, to more working on uh, the due, due diligence uh, or switching into a management role. Uh, some of them are actually you know, working in VC funds now uh, or if they're starting their own startup company. So uh, we, we really try to bring opportunities for uh, applicants uh, into our fellowship program. Uh, this new uh, fellowship program will be starting uh, in late June and early July and we're accepting applications now. Uh, we're also looking for a new uh, venture partner in the healthcare space, um, which uh, we're looking for. Uh, you are also uh, working in venture, uh, either a traditional uh, financial uh, institutional venture capital, focus on healthcare or uh, corporate venture capital, but you'll like to do annual investing on the side, uh, we'll like to talk to you. Um, we're also open collaborate uh, with other VC funds. Uh, we're also looking for a legal partner who is also an investor to uh, look at deals with us um, and also invest with us. Okay. Yeah, so the July fellowship program is now open. We really welcome you to apply. Um, we do receive a lot of applicants uh, for our fellowship program, uh, so uh, please do apply if you're interested, uh, but we will look through your motivation, your experience, your background to determine you, if you will be selected uh, to join our cohort. Um, this is a part-time uh, engagement. Uh, the time commitment is about 10 hours to uh, 20 hours, but most likely will be around 10 hours per week. Uh, but uh, the co actual commitment will be dependent on if you, you actually have a, a company that you're doing due diligence in or you're running a market study that's really pricing. Um, and then when you apply, please indicate uh, what is your uh, preferred team is uh, either in sustainability or in healthcare. Um, what you will be doing is, you know, running due diligence just like a typical uh, VC funds, uh, you will be uh, conducting market studies, um, you will be sourcing uh, interesting companies, uh, you might be uh, engaged with other investors, uh, collaborate with other investors, um, and we're also running an impact assessment for our company, so you, if that's a uh, that's an area that's interesting to you, uh, we welcome that as well. Um, if you're a credit investor, um, we will ask you to invest with us. So you will be actually be joining our voting process for the companies uh, if you're going to syndicate on. And if you're voting yes, then that means you're investing in that company. Uh, so we, we take it really seriously. Um, yeah, so please apply. Uh, the, the deadline for the initial application is May the 12th. Next slide. Um, we're also launching a climate tech investing uh, a bootcamp for those who are interested in learning how to run due diligence of a climate tech uh, startup company. Um, uh, clean tech or climate tech in general is a very narrow area uh, with a lot of um, uh, technical knowledge um, or it, it's not very easily understood. Uh, so. We, we do have, you know, uh, investors, they, they actually wanted to join the fellowship program, but don't have four to six months to work with us, uh, but they still want to learn how to 
run the due diligence. Uh, so that's why we have decided to put together this uh, one month bootcamp. Uh, you will be uh, learning all the basics with us. Uh, we'll be uh, you know, running due diligence with us in a more uh, accelerated uh, process. We also have you know, professors teaching as well. Um, also guest speakers from various uh, venture funds participating uh, to provide their own uh, feedback or thoughts on what is going on in this space. Uh, so we welcome you to join in if that's uh, something you're really interested uh, in learning and perfecting your skill. Next slide. Okay. Um, yeah, so this is a, uh, the deal day overview. Uh, we have um, 10 companies uh, presenting today. Each of them are giving uh, five minutes to pitch. Uh, and, and you, all the annual investors, will be doing a quick vote on if you think the company is interesting for you to, uh, to invest. Uh, we have more sustainability companies time. Um, in some of the company, we are running due diligence. Um, and some of the company are completely new to us. Um, and we are actually syndicating for Bay infrastructure right now. Um, and the Nautilus uh, syndication will be closing uh, super soon as well. So if you want to get into the Nautilus deal, uh, this is your last chance. Um, move to the next slide. Yeah. Um, so per request of our investor, we're also putting together uh, Impact Access Fund. Um, so we, we, we came across uh, numerous very interesting deals. They, they move really quickly um, and uh, they would like to, you know, us to move super quick as well. Uh, so that was, you know, one uh, motivation behind the way, why we decided to put together access fund. Uh, we'll be uh, focusing on primarily, again, the Cedar uh, pre-seed companies. Uh, if you want to join our fund, then you'll be able to join our internal deal uh, selection meeting. Um, the companies we're looking, on, uh, looking at are really the, the enabling company. If they, they are there, uh, they are enabling the industry, they're enabling the impact. Uh, we, we're now shining away from you know, technologies uh, companies, even though they're really difficult to invest in, but luckily we, we all have uh, you know, technical background. We are, that's our, actually our specialty. We, we like to uh, invest in companies in deep tech. Uh, technology breakthrough. So uh, more interest of the uh, of this fund will also send in, uh, information out to uh, to the community. So uh, let us know if you're interested in joining in. Next slide. Yeah. Okay, so about this deal day, this is not a demo day. Uh, it is a more initial screening process of the companies. Uh, we will uh, learn your uh, interest level um, about each of the company. Uh, for both the annual investors and the venture uh, venture funds, and I would like to you know collaborate with you in the DD process, uh, share the deal with you. Um, if uh, we we decide we're you know now deciding to syndicate on, on a company, but if you know you're a VC fund and you want to uh, invest in the company uh, yourself, uh, we can we can facilitate the intro uh, to you as well. Uh, for all the Android investors, uh, as mentioned, we, we will run the due diligence ourselves. If we, we think the company is super interesting, super strong, uh, we'll call for a syndicate. Uh, however, if we, we do not call for an official syndicate, you will still get their information and then you can work with them uh, yourself. Uh, I'll pass on to Ping Ping. I think that's pretty much all. Thank you so much. And join our community. Mm. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Jane, for a great presentation. Um, yeah, so I guess our first company, um, PillSmart. Um, Arden, you can go ahead and set up your screen share. Um, so basically, we will have five minutes of pitching and then, you know, another uh, a minute and a half for investors to fill in the poll. And by the way, this poll doesn't um, commit you in investing in the company in anyhow. It's just ask about your opinion. Um, yeah, and so, and so if there are any questions for either Vectors Angel or the company, just um, feel free to type it in the chat. Um, JP, um, yeah, please start with Angel Money. Sounds great, Ben. So on my screen, I'm seeing the poll still. Is that um, just on 
Is that going to go away or? Can you hear me? Um, yep, I'm hearing you. Um, the poll, let me see all in the poll. Oh, there we go. Okay. okay. It's gone. Um, all right, good afternoon. My name is Jason McNeil. I'm the CEO and co founder of Ando. Um, Ando provides digital banking and other financial services to Gen Zs and millennials. And our value proposition is that the banking services and financial services that we provide our target audience is better for them and it's better for the planet. Um, the challenge and the opportunity is, is that there's a large subset of the population that wishes that there was more that they could do to prevent or combat climate change. Um, seven in 10 adults wish that they could do more um, to prevent climate change. Um, but the reality is, is that the vast majority of the population has no idea what to do and they don't even know where to start. Um, oddly enough, the easiest solution is also um, the best solution. And that is, is that when customers simply park their money in an account that is only utilized and to be invested in assets that reduce emissions and improve the environment, that it has an order of a magnitude bigger effect than if you change behaviors in terms of taking shorter showers, flying less, taking the train, you know, and or changing your diet. Um, so Ando is the first bank um, in the United States and we think the world that does a few things. Um, one is that when you set up an account, checking account, savings account with Ando, it is FDIC insured. So you get all the protection that you would get if you could put your money in Wells Fargo or B of A or any sort of other bank. Um, the um, uniqueness of what we do is that we provide transparency back to the customers that open their checking and savings accounts. So they actually have visibility into what the bank is doing with their money. And the other thing that we do is we restrict um, what the banks can do with the money in terms of it only allowing for green loans to be financed from a customer's um, deposit base. And those two things are unique to the marketplace and we think uh, will deliver a competitive advantage over, over others that are in the market. Um, so it's a massive market. Uh, there are over 10,000 banks and credit unions in the United States. Um, there's an emerging uh, sort of bank sector that's called challenger or neobanks. There's about 111 in the United States. Um, all of them predominantly fund brown or non-green assets. And again, there's no transparency into what customer deposits, how they're being allocated. Um, and they are set up to continue to originate sort of traditional asset classes, whether they're real estate-based, residential or commercial, um, or whether they're lending to, to industry, agriculture, energy, et cetera. Um, or is Ando set up by design right from the start to only fund green assets? And our um, positioning from uh, for Gen Zs and millennials is that there's three pillars. So we wanna provide um, industry leading features. So get paid early overdraft protection, a fee free ATM network, the ability to get bill pay. Um, we want the experience to be financially rewarding. So no fees and then a, the ability to earn a substantially higher rate of return on your savings account if our customers do certain activities, which include introducing Ando to their peers. And then the third thing is, is that Ando again provides Gen Zs and millennials with the ability to have an impact on the environment and climate that they currently don't have um, elsewhere. Um, in terms of how we make money, so there's three different product lines that we offer. The first one is again, core banking services. The two uh, biggest um, revenue sources for that is, is the debit card. So Gen Zs and millennials, their primary form of payment is their debit card, um, not credit, unlike the boomers um, or Gen X. Um, each year on average, consumers will spend roughly 250, well, banks will earn $250 in revenue for um, swiping the debit cards and for when customers access an ATM network, an ATM machine that's out of network and margins are about 60%. We're also, and so, um, for the 100 million people that we're targeting, we're also gonna be introducing other green financial service products that don't currently exist. So we're partnering with like Travelers and Safeco um, and Nationwide to offer the first green automobile insurance policies and homeowner insurance policies. And so for the same price and the same coverage, um, customers can be self-assured that the money that they're paying from a premium standpoint is only gonna be invested in green assets. So for every dollar that we pay in premiums, carriers roughly invest um, 67 cents um, into a wide variety of assets. And then the third 
product line is credit card. It's by far the biggest revenue generating source on a per user per annum basis, about 1,272. Um, and the margins are roughly 50%. So you can kind of see it's a very large market, lots of customers, obviously lots of service providers, um, but many of the customers have multiple accounts, both in terms of bank accounts and credit cards. So we're gonna be one of many accounts that customers will, will use. Um, and then, uh, you know, we take roughly, we estimate it's going to cost us $70 to acquire a customer. We're at about $7 today. We just started a uh, week and a half ago marketing um, Ando di digitally, and our customer acquisition costs are, are right around $7. Obviously, um, the bigger, the, the more penetration that we get, the, the, the cost will go up. Um, our profitability on a per customer basis over 10 years is roughly $1,400. And over five years, it's about $600. Um, if we penetrate 0.1% of the market of the 100 million Gen X, Gen Z, um, and Gen X, or, um, sorry, Gen Z um, and millennials, then we, we'd uh, roughly have 100,000 customers. And those 100,000 customers will generate roughly $105 million in annual recurring revenue. Um, the way we get to our customer base is primarily, again, through digital. Um, social media um, is going to be a great avenue for us and it's going to be borrowers thanking depositors um, for the ability to be green and so um, whether it's schools or low low to moderate income households um, or just general businesses um, the concept is to generate awareness and create um, empowerment that in, in an area that doesn't currently exist and part of the empowerment is that we enable customers to share ando with others and again, not only do we financially reward them by higher interest rates, but they also can earn um, direct compensation for that. And then they also have a social currency that they accumulate so that for every person that I recruit, um, I get sort of a, a, a I, I see my impact as greater than just the account, the money that I have in my account. Um, it can grow exponentially as my network grows exponentially. So we can track um, all the different people that have joined Ando is a result of the initial outreach. And we're doing this in part. Sorry, sorry, JP, um, your time's up. So please um, wrap up. Okay, so um, for, from a summary standpoint, so the, the five co-founders of the company have started nine de novo businesses, two of which went public, um, five of which were subsequently sold to larger companies. One became the world's largest green bond platform in 2015. Um, we've come together to basically to do something similar um, just on the right side of the bank balance sheet. We're going to be first to market with this product. We have a clean, distinct brand. Um, we have transparency in terms of what's funded. We have diversity in terms of what's funded. So the energy, transportation, buildings, agriculture, and industry. And we offer multiple financial products, which again, will differentiate us from others. And then we're creating a social network effect so that whether it's an individual customer or a partner of ours, um, they, they create a social currency and then they share that social currency um, through Instagram and other social media sites so that they can tell people how they are impacting climate change in a quantifiable way. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Cool. Thanks, JP. Um, I'm launching the... So please fill in. All right. Yeah, sorry. Um, okay, so yeah, the poll for Ando money is up. Um, Alexis, get started. Um, if you have any information, um, it, sorry, if you have any questions, um, please, or wanted to connect to the startups, please feel free to email me at pinpin at vectors.earth. Um, yeah, I saw a question that Ryan asked that whether they will have access to this deck. 
Um, yeah, um, if anyone wants access to the deck, um, please feel free to email me. I'll, I'll be happy to contact the startups for you. Okay, um, that said, uh, Natalus um, can go ahead and get started. So hello everyone, my name is Alex and I'm the CEO of Nautilus. Uh, we're a four-year-old company based out of San Francisco. And uh, Nautilus is working on revolutionizing air freight through large-scale drones. So today there are only two modes of delivery for long-haul cargo by ocean and by air. Air freight is timely but expensive and ocean freight is slow and a commodity. So Nautilus's technology captures the timeliness of air freight at one third the cost and more than 60% less CO2 emissions. If you take a look at air freight as a sector, it's been rising linearly and steadily with increase in population ever since the first mail delivery in the United States in the 1950s. However, in 1996, something has changed and it was of course, Amazon. So over the last two decades with the introduction of Amazon Prime service, customer expectations have been shifting towards an almost instantaneous and free delivery of products and goods. These expectations have been driving an exponential rise in air freight. In fact, Amazon Air Prime owns one of the largest fleet of aircraft in the world today. JD, Rockerton, and Alibaba have been following in the same footsteps as well. Another important trend that occurred as a byproduct of the rise in e-commerce is that the first time in history, volume and not weight actually drive the air freight industry. So as air freight is adapting to e-commerce, the aircraft industry must do the same. So instead of a traditional tube and wing configuration uh, optimized for passengers, Nautilus drones feature a blended wing body configuration, which is able to introduce over 50% more volume for the same size and weight of aircraft. 50% more volume means twice as much revenue cargo for the same amount of trip and an over 60% decrease in CO2 emissions for the same trip. Another important aspect to capturing the exponential rise of e-commerce is autonomy. So freight airlines have seen an incredible decline in pilots entering the workforce. This is gonna be further amplified with the passenger flights doubling over the next decade. So as the next generation of freight aircraft enter the market, our customers are requiring that they all be autonomous. So as a company, Nautilus looks very much like a Boeing or an Airbus business. We design, manufacture and sell our aircraft. And we also have a very lucrative parts business. The flagship product is a 100 metric ton freighter capable of delivery across the most profitable cargo routes in the world today. Asia to North America, Asia to Europe, and Asia to Africa. It competes directly with Boeing 777, 747, and Airbus A350 products. So the flagship aircraft is a large vision and the company understands that, so we have to take a, a stair-step approach. So along with the long haul a flagship product, the team has actually identified two more opportunities in the market. A 3.8 ton freighter meant for regional deliveries and a 60 ton freighter meant for domestic US, inner Europe, inner Asia deliveries. After the completion of each aircraft, the team will scale up onto the next larger product. So over the next three years, the team will be focused on bringing our first product to market, the 3.8 ton freighter. Its requirements have already been set with the input of most major operators. The aircraft has two and a half more volume uh, than the com competing aircraft, allowing it to carry two and a half more revenue cargo for the same trip. That's a three X reduction in cost to transport one kilogram of cargo. For airlines customers, these vehicles have a significant, significant impact on their business. The increase in profit margins is up to eight X. So today, Nautilus has amassed an incredible order book valued at over $5 billion and 400 aircraft. The order book has orders spanning all three product lines. So the team is 24 months away from the first slide of the full scale 30 meter, 9,000 kilogram prototype. That milestone will demonstrate technology and allow the company to convert the initial order book into firm orders, which come with a 20% deposits. That will push the company to revenue. So in April 2019, we hit a major milestone by conducting a 10 scale wind tunnel test in a world-class facility here in San Diego, California. The test validated the design of the configuration across stability and control, as well as performance. Customers were invited to witness the test, which created the momentum behind the order book. Over the last four years, we've built an incredible team. Together, we have been through 25 plus aircraft programs over the last decade, spanning general aviation, commercial, and military. 
Nautilus is currently raising a $6 million A1. We're actually starting to close this week and we still have a little bit of room left. Um, there will be a second $15 million A2 financing later this year. $10 million of that round has already been committed by a strategic customer airline. Thank you very much for your time, everyone. Okay, um, thanks, Alexei. <clears throat> um, let's see, I'll start the poll for Natlus. Yeah, no, no worries. We are good to go. Yep. Um, let's see if this shows up. Yep, perfect. Is it coming? Oh, here we go. Here's my video. All right, can you guys see me? Yep, I see you on the top. On the yes, that's <laughs> perfect. Oh my god, I really love that. <laughs> this is so cool. I've been trying this for the first time, so so far of me. Um, anyway, um, thank you everybody. Thank you, Pin Pin. Thank you, Venture Vector Angels, Angels, for giving us the opportunity to talk with you. Um, we know video games captivate. Can they go one step further and improve health? I'm Swathi Survey, founder and CEO of Light Sprite. And we build games to help people manage chronic health conditions. And clinicians and players rely on our data insights. With the pandemic, the number of people suffering from a mental health issue has doubled. A recent CDC survey found that now 41% of Americans are struggling. This costs billions of dollars in lost productivity and direct costs. Our clinically validated mental health video game, Cinesprite, is the first to win a US Surgeon General Award and the only one recommended by payers and clinicians today. Clinicians use our unique player-generated data to transform care through a deeper understanding of their patients. In a clinical setting, we have worked with a range of diagnoses, including anxiety, depression, substance abuse, PTSD, and even the severely mentally ill. Cinesprite is based on Bandura's social cognitive theory. It is a commonly accepted framework by clinicians. As a player-driven world exploration game, Cinesprite is a safe place where people are empowered to explore their emotions, understand their triggers, discover what evidence-based techniques work for them, and practice those skills. Sox the Fox, the game's main character, is a peer that provides critical emotional support. Sox becomes a Zen master by teaching pre people proven techniques that help with anxiety and depression. Select from a range of mini games. Sox guides players through exercises, including journaling, uh, questions that explore emotions, meditation, and breathing. Suzette's a typical Sinusprite player. She has several behavioral health issues and physical issues. She is a caregiver to her adult autistic son and grandchild. And her life is very stressful in, in where she lives, which is in Indianapolis. Over the past two and a half years, whenever Suzette has had a crisis, she has trusted Cinesprite. For her, it's convenient. It feels like a game. It helps calm her down and stay grounded, something she struggles to do. We strategically focused on establishing the necessary market and clinical validation to drive adoption with our key buyers. Along the way, we've also realized revenue. With the support of all these partners, we have laid the foundation for a business that is with long-term sustainable growth that is also ready for acceleration. Our trajectory fits how the best digital health companies grow. This foundation includes our clinical results. It is the reason why we've won over 25 Global Health Innovation Awards. Our clinical improvement of a 2.5 reduction in the PHQA translates into a person going into work two and a half more days each, two more days each week, excuse me. When Cinesprite is used as an adjunct to therapy, it has the same scale improvement as a pharmacologic. Our independent health economic study is the necessary ROI evidence to encourage high physician adoption our clinical results generate sizable revenue opportunities. But clinical results do not matter if people don't use it. And we have built a technology that solves mental health issues that people love. Our thousands of players have completed over 23,000 sessions. We have retention rates 3X above the industry average and 2X above the leading consumer products. With the pandemic, we've seen the robust consumer demand of our new, our new consumer version and our, our 
user acquisition costs are about a third of the industry average. We also started receiving inbound requests from employers and launched sales activities to drive adoption. And in less than 60 days, we've signed up customers, a national wellness platform, became a Mercer consulting vendor, and are in conversations with several other benefits brokers. And that is because CineSprite uniquely fills a gap as an interactive self-help tool for employees. We started our outreach efforts with payers early. Their future revenue growth will come through the Medicaid line of business via performance-based capitated contracts. We have established acceptance with these patients who are often high cost and difficult to motivate, often with complex cases. And they have said that CineSprite is life-changing. Their inspiration every morning, and they are ready for the next level. We are accelerating these conversations and continuing outreach efforts through our strategic partners like Bayer Pharmaceuticals. We are initially targeting an ICP worth $15 million, and the current revenue multiples for digital health sector are 20 to 40x. We are proud of our strategic investments by Bayer AG, Symphonia RX, Jumpstart Foundry, NextCube, and now AARP. We are the leaders in the new field of healthcare entertainment. We wrote Nike's first wearable technology patents, managed the largest portfolio of mobile health apps for the Department of Defense, managed data science teams for the State Department, and built consumer-facing experiences for global brands such as Disney and American Gradings. We are looking to open up a seed round in Q3 and are looking to meet potential investors. We're also looking to expand our team and need marketing, sales, and operations people to meet our next set of milestones. We also welcome introductions to employers or payers. LightSprite gets people engaged. Engaged people get better faster. Thank you. Perfect. That was like five minutes almost. All right. Um, that, that was perfect. Um, OK. I will launch your polls. And while that is happening, I will um, I will need to stop your sharing, Swati. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> All right. And then I will, let me see. Now I will try to set up for true LG. Let me see how this would work. I believe I, now I see the, the share screen. OK, perfect. You can so try I it. I can do this this time, and we'll see what we can do. That's right. Finally, okay. Great. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank Swati for jumping in and saving us on, on a short uh, notice. So congratulations to her uh, for, for dealing with that. And my name is Nathaniel Jackson. I'm the CEO of uh, True Algae. I'm here today with uh, Angela Setsis, who's our Chief Commercial Officer. And we're delighted to be presenting to Vectors Angel and look forward to answering your question. Oh, um, sorry True. to interrupt you a bit. Yes. Um, and yeah, I think um, you're sharing the wrong the wrong screen. So we're really? seeing we're seeing uh, your Zoom we're, right now. You're seeing my Zoom and not my presentation. Right. Right. Um, uh, okay. I have you. So you, you can see the, the screen now. Do you see the beginning of the slideshow now? Uh, not yet. I do not believe this is so strange. Yeah, this is a little strange. You see it now? No. You've got your whole screen shared. You need to I'm, unshare. So stop the share. Okay. Stop the share. Okay. And then once you do that, when you click share, don't click right. the share button. There's a little up arrow next to it. And then you want to select the thing you want to share. All yes, I see is, here. I'm sorry, uh, once again, now I don't see any. Up um, at that top where it's let me, let me stop I'm going to have to leave. Can you, you can you just uh, upload my, my screen? Yep, I'm very sure. sorry. I'll do that. Um, let me just show this. Um, format tools. Let's see, view, slide sharing. OK, and then I'll turn you up. Let me just. In the poll for light sprite and share the results, and then um, 
Okay, I'll go back to Zoom. I'll share my screen. Uh, all right. Okay, does everyone see Truaji's presentation? Yes. Perfect. All right. Um, thank, okay. you. thank you so much. Okay. Just um, see which slide to go to. Very good. Um, so, will you advance it when I ask you to? I guess it's yeah. under your control. Okay, yeah. great. Can you advance it to the next slide? Yep. Thank you. So finally, uh, True Algae is a sustainable algal production company bringing the, the benefits of natural and regenerative algae to the world. Our first vertical is selling organic soil amendment uh, product to, to large fruit and vegetable farms, but we can monetize the algae in a number of different ways, including sod and grass, chicken feed, fish feed, and nutraceuticals. As you can see from this picture, we produce algae in vertical photobioreactors. This is a very efficient patented mode of production system that enables us to harvest five days a week with very low input costs of only water, electricity, CO2, and small amounts of trace minerals. Consequently, we have very high gross margins of 70%. Next slide. So the problem we're solving uh, for the farms is what one of our early clients called said is the dirt is tired. After two generations of using chemical fertilizers, there's massive leaching of the soil, which has led to um, stagnation in terms of productivity. And the farmers have to use more and more chemical fertilizers just to maintain their productivity. And another problem is that fresh fruits and vegetables have relatively short shelf life without uh, various types of, of preservatives. Next slide. So our solution is what we call putting life back into the soil. Essentially our product is an organic prebiotic uh, that uh, enhances root growth and enables the plants to access more water and micronutrients. And we've been able to consistently demonstrate 20% increase in yield per acre. Uh, we've also been able to show that uh, we can extend shelf life for up to five days longer in berries and various different fruits and vegetables. Next slide. So the value proposition for our farmer clients are quite compelling. 20% uh, greater yield per acre, uh, through third-party uh, studies, we've demonstrated that they can use up to 75% less chemical fertilizers and still have greater output. Um, we improve the soil fertility, and we also can improve the shelf life. Next slide. If you can hit the, le the, the button at the lower left-hand side, you can see uh, just a, a quick time-lapse of um, our control versus our treated on the left-hand side of the control, and the right-hand side of the treated. Uh, through various studies, we've proven that it's 6x uh, times more water retention uh, using our product. Next slide. Uh-oh, um, all right, let me see. Uh, let me go to the next slide, okay. Okay, so in terms of traction, um, we have uh, uh, sales and IP. We have 15 paying um, uh, large farm clients. We have 35 field tests underway. Our annual sales growth is up 68% uh, versus uh, 2019, and we had a good start to 2021. Uh, the plant that you saw was is in Florida. It's a 36 metric ton plant. And we also have a licensed partner um, in Mexico who's started a, a smaller plant and plans to expand uh, to our size. We have a maximum output of 40,000 gallons per month, and we've already received a patent for motor production and filed for divisional claims to expand those claims. We've also applied for this patent in 10 other large agriculture markets around the world. Next slide. So in terms of projections, uh, we plan to break even by the fourth quarter of this year. Um, we've got uh, three new license agreements uh, lined up and uh, a couple new distribution agreements. Um, and we only plan to be hiring a few more salespeople and an agronomist expert. Next slide. Um, in terms of our license projects, we've already signed letters of intent with two multinational, multi-billion dollar national product uh, companies, Sumitomo Corporation and Roto Pharmaceutical, and we're advanced discussions in the UK and Europe and uh, Canada for uh, further license agreements. Next slide. We have a very highly experienced and diverse team. I'd like to particularly point out uh, Angela Setsis, who's our chief commercial officer. Uh, she uh, was a former VP of sales for MarTech Biosciences, which was a startup that sold out for $1.1 billion. 
She manages a sales team that $400 million of sales. And we have an experienced team that knows how to execute. Next slide. Uh, to date, we've raised $3.8 million, uh, 3 million in equity from including some institutional investors like Soil Works Natural Capital and DEFTA Partners. Uh, also $800,000 in convertible note. Uh, our current round is a safe note for 1 million. We've already raised 400 million to uh, 400,000 to date and are seeking to close it out with an additional 600,000 more. Uh, the use of funds essentially is to continue the, our field tests, uh, to work on our product patents and to build out our sales team. And of course, we're very active with R&D, uh, looking at the metabolite composition of our uh, various different products, as well as doing uh, soil carbon counts and looking at greenhouse gas reduction studies. Next. And so we look forward to uh, talking with you uh, in the breakout room. And thanks for your patience. I, I realize that uh, uh, we took you a long time to get going. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah, thanks a lot. I'll launch up the polls and let's see who is up next. Um, genome link. Uh, Tomo, you can come up and set up your screen. Yep, I'm here. So let me share my screen. Okay, um, we'll maybe wait about like a minute-ish okay. for sure. people to fill up the poll. Let's see. <sighs> All right, yeah, sorry for, I, I launched up the long poll. Thanks, um, Clifford, for pointing that out. Um, okay. Um, for, I've got quite a few questions about connecting with the founders. Um, so I wanna just point out, out that um, we, we have a breakout room at the end. So if you would like to connect with any of the founders, um, please um, feel free to just um, go into the breakout rooms and talk to them directly. Um, yes, and we'll be starting the breakout room soon. So anyway, we have only um, three companies left. Uh, all right. Well, I'll keep the True Algae poll still running um let's see yeah people are still filling out i'll leave it on for a while <clears throat> okay also leave true audi's pull on for a little bit, but I guess in the interest of time, like Tomo, you could get started. Hi, um, can you guys hear me? Yep, perfectly. Great, and then you see my screen, right? Yep. Cool. Uh, I think I can start anytime, should I? Yes, you can. Great. Um, hi, everybody, I'm, I'm Tomo. I'm the co-founder, CEO of GenomeLink. We are building a DNA app store and health data biobank on top of the billion dollar genomics market. Today, the company is doing great. We have already achieved profitability with 3X year over year revenue growth rate, 3 million dollar annualized run rate with high sales margin and growing with only one month payback period. Today, we have about 300,000 people uploading DNA data from all over the world. So with this in mind, let me explain how we do it. 
the consumer genomics market is growing, but people aren't really satisfied with current DNA tests yet. After receiving the results, they don't know what to do with it, and more and more people are concerned about data privacy. On the other hand, companies are very interested in reaching DNA data holders and massive data pool of it, but they don't have full access to it yet. For example, 23andMe is becoming more closed platform after receiving 300 million funding from GSK, and they are now becoming a drug company by themselves. So we were wondering, what if we create an application platform on top of this DNA test kit business, where people can transfer their DNA data from any testing company, securely store data all in one place, and continuously access more insights, products, and health research without losing data ownership. We can help people to know more and do more with their data, and also help businesses market and recruit DNA data holders. So that's GenomeLink in a nutshell. We are building a DNA app store and a health data biobank. So you may be asking yourself, how does it work or how is this different from 23andMe? So the answer is this. We target existing 50 million people who have already got DNA tested, then encourage them to transfer their DNA data to GenomeLink to unlock hundreds of unique analyses with trade product even for free. This is possible thanks to data portability rights. Your data belongs to you. Then uh, we bring more partners, market and recruit DNA data holders through our platform. Our platform gets stronger when we have more apps and partners creating a network effect. Today, we are making money from both B2C and B2B through premium apps, subscription, revenue share, and affiliate fees. We are already achieving about 3 million annualized run rate with high revenue retention. And also we are seeing negative revenue churn by adding new apps and partners for the past several months. Today, we are acquiring over 500 people uploading DNA data at $8 CPA per one DNA upload. Then uh, we can generate about $11 from one DNA upload through a variety of consumer apps and B2B partners uh, while we are accumulating good amount of the lifetime value over years. We have about 3 million run rate with 300,000 people uploading DNA data. So we can, if we acquire five to 10 million users, we can become a billion dollar unicorn company. And also if we can become a de facto standard application platform of your DNA data, there is more further opportunity for us to enter to such big market like patient recruitment and medical genetic testing markets. Company like 23andMe decided not to create open marketplace because it potentially helps other competitors to become company like 23andMe. So knowing that dilemma, Helix raised 300 million uh, to build a DNA app store, but failed due to closed marketplace model and lack of killer consumer apps. So we've been positioning Genomelink as an open platform where people can transfer data from any testing company we acquire users by us building a great consumer apps by ourselves. We are Netflix for your DNA data. We have real experiences in building this consumer and platform business. I'm from M3, 70 billion budget medical platform in Japan. See, uh, Utah was one of the founding member of Japanese version of 20th and me. CTO came as a tech lead at joint venture together with Illumina and Sunny. And we work with Carlos Bustamante, who is a legendary population genomics professor at Stanford. We've been backed by great investors, including Sampa, Sony, and Barclays Skydeck. Today, I'm here to raise uh, 1 million for my uh, seed plus round. We already got 500,000 commitment from Chrome Group of the Angels, but we still have some available uh, room available for you. Uh, we are raising with safe note with 20 million pre cap. Uh, if this is exciting for you, uh, please let me know. Uh, thank you. All right, perfect. Cool. Um, I will okay, stop sharing the poll and then launch the poll for Genomely. 
All right, thank you everyone and sorry for the delay and the confusion. My name is Diana. I am the CEO of Neurobotics and uh, Neurobotics builds brain-derived robotic AI and we are aiming to drive the autonomous future. So I'm sure many of you have been at some point in your life been stuck in a traffic jam. It's very, very annoying. And it's very similar for the data currently on the cloud. There is way too much of it. And by 2025, we will have 175 trillion gigabytes of data on the cloud. Meanwhile, we're spending $600 billion every year trying to make sense of it. Uh, but nevertheless, we have zero level five autonomy cars, planes, drones, and so forth. So our aim is to unblock the traffic jam currently on the cloud by building what we like to call the highways of AI. So we do this with edge computing and the idea behind edge computing is very simple. How do you take a piece of data from point A to point B in the fastest way possible? Um, and to answer this question, we actually took insight from the world's most powerful computer, which is your brain. Um, the technology is called neuromorphic computing and we are starting with intelligent perception. Um, so we built the world's first neuromorphic vision platform. We did this in a partnership with Intel. They are releasing their neomorphic chip in two years from now. And together with Mercedes and BMW, we're one of the very few partners who get to test it before it's uh, released commercially. And we're also working with the Sony neomorphic cameras that have over 500 clients that specifically requested a platform. So we have a very energy efficient chip that will be released in two years. We have the neomorphic sensors, which are energy efficient, and you know everyone needs the, the software platform to put it all together. So this is how it looks like. Um, here, let's say we're trying to map road construction. And what we can do is only extract the relevant pixels out of every frame. So here you can see, for example, the blue and the red pixels, they only code for the things that are moving here. This drives down the cost by 90%, um, and it allows for much more complex analyses. For example, here we can monitor road construction over months, uh, make sure we're tracking the progress, but not analyzing every single pixel in the image, um, and of course, reducing the cost of the process. So this is an example of what we can do. This is a GPS and internet denied area. And this drone is reacting now in a microsecond uh, to this basketball because of the way we select the pixels. So this is just one of the POCs that we're doing now. Um, our client pipeline is not just defense, it's also manufacturing and construction as well as automotive and aerospace with about 12 major pilots um, in the pipeline. So why do clients choose to work with us? Uh, first of all, we can be up to 1000 times faster when we're full stack, we are cheaper because we don't require expensive cameras or LIDARs or petabytes of space, especially on the cloud side. And as you maybe know, um, with um, when it comes to sustainability, cloud computing is, is one of the most damaging things to the environment at the moment. And finally, we can be up to 10,000 X more energy efficient, which is a very big jump. It is important that we become full stack. So this will happen when uh, the Intel chip is released and we, when we are running on it, but still we're very, very excited about this. Um, so we think that this is going to drive the future of machine vision. Um, currently the machine learning market is starting to stagnate at 7% KGR. Neomorphic vision is growing at 87 in the past few years, which is uh, a lot. So not only do we expect it will take over the machine learning market, but also create a new market for neomorphic vision in general. Um, we also think that it, when it comes to the competition, so we have the traditional companies like Scale or Mobileye that work with automotive a lot. These are the traditional ones that still analyze every single pixel and are currently overloading the cloud. Um, the emerging neomorphic ones are all pretty much still in the labs where they were developed. Uh, they are pretty far from being production ready. The only ones that are production ready are half owned by Sony and they're actually our collaborators. They may make the cameras and we build a platform and we're trying to co-sell to the same clients. So, you know, it's, it's quite an ambitious goal to try to lead the future of AI. And the reason why we're uh, so confident is mainly because of the team. So my name is Diana. I am the CEO and founder. I have 10 years experience building the most advanced imaging systems in the world, uh, in my case, laser microscopes. Um, 
I have a PhD and two postdocs on in neuroscience with a focus on navigation and imaging. My first postdoc was with the two Nobel laureates that discovered navigation in the brain. So we're trying to extract that and apply it to robots and vehicles. Um, Randall Kuna, the product lead, uh, has raised previously over $150 million from Founders Fund and Elon Musk directly. He's been an assistant professor at Boston and has 15 years experience in neuromorphic computing. Uh, sales and marketing talent comes from IBM. And we're working with ETH Zurich and the Human Brain Project uh, who are offering us over $2 billion worth of R&D resources for robotics, the drone that you saw computing centers, just so that we can bring this neuromorphic technology to market. So at this point, we can deliver to each of the corporations in our pipeline that we have otherwise with, it's gonna take about three years, um, or you know, we, we can race, which we are, and get the right front end and QA talent to modularize and productize the technology. So in this way, each UI and each product can go to four or five uh, corporations at once, and we can add more and more modules and set up a, a proper pricing point. So these are kind of the hires that we wanna get. Um, we want to deliver on at least this first POC, if not the four this year. Um, and then have, um, have a stack of, of developments for each module that we can follow up on where we already have people committed. Um, in our second iteration, we want to combine the cameras with the software. And our third, we want to have cameras plus software plus chip so we can become full stack um, and, and move into mass production. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much the idea. Um, thank you very much for your time and happy to answer questions.